Hey y'all, I just wanted to give some feedback about some of the projects coming in. Um, they've been great. I really like the uh, variety that I've gotten so far. Uh, I wanted to give some pointers and some tips. This isn't gonna harm anybody's grades who've already put them in um, or anybody who will put them in. Uh, but these are just suggestions that I can provide uh, that are for best practices. So. For example, I love that in this I can click music on and off and that swaps it between stuff and then I can click the button up here and I can click the options and it opens up um, and let me hit reset, I get this. However, um, so there are a couple problems that I noticed with this implementation from a developer standpoint and from an artist standpoint. Uh, so, for example, the stats panel is a single image that doesn't have these sections blanked out and that has those sections baked into the texture. So what I mean is these white boxes should actually be separate elements, maybe in a horizontal layout group that I explained in, uh, during the lecture that will allow you to have as many elements as you want. Like maybe we get rid of one of those panel types, maybe we don't. Um, and the, uh, these, these gradient outline panels are separate per object. So for example, the, um, the options panel for the foreground is its own object baked into the texture. And the, uh, trying to find another panel, I think the reset panel, if I open this up, is also its own texture. It would be better if, um, it's difficult because this one's a gradient, so I'm not sure the best route to do it, uh, other than to make them all the same aspect ratio and, and like alternate between two sizes. But it, it would be better to have just that gradient and the, and the black with the three yellow spots, the three yellow, like, like almost like rivets. I'm not sure uh, the visual style, what, it, what, it's, what it's going for in that particular tutorial, but it looks good. Um, Having those, oh, thank you, chivalry too. Um, I don't care. Oh, okay, I hit the X, but we're opening anyway. Okay, so um, it would be better to have those as two separate elements, maybe one small window and one big window, like the options I know is its own. Where is it? Here. Um, remove the text, because then you can add the text in as a text element, like right-click uh, UI text so that you're saving space. You don't have to have as many images. Uh, that, that's a problem for mobile, especially is the size of your exports. The same goes for these buttons. You know, these are all the same button style. They're all, um, they're all basically yellow with a gradient. So it would be better to export the buttons on their own, the, a single button, just without any text on it. Get out of here. Um, as a single texture and then using that texture again and again uh, while putting text over it in Unity, like right clicking, oh, and right here, text. And right now it's empty. So it's, it's better to have the texture as exported as the button on its own and then putting text over it. I'll do a quick example just to show what I mean and it applies for everything for space saving reasons. Um, but other than that, I, I really like this implementation. Uh, the, I like that it's so interactive, like things work when I press on them. And the, these buttons are not baked into the image. They're actually separate images, the, the red X and the, and the checkbox. Uh, maybe it would be better to have the, um, the back, like the red circle on its own and then have a custom font that you put in for sa space saving. I don't know, so you can have an X or, or the bracket backwards. Um, that that's neither here nor there because you could use these in many different spots. Um, there are other um, efficiency things I could recommend, but the, the primary ones are the top bar at the top. I would definitely recommend having the gradient with the black as its own panel exported and then, and so you can like slice it and do whatever you want and be efficient. And then having that white box be its own element that you place three of them in a horizontal layout group and then maybe tie those icons as like um, anchored pivots on the left hand side of each so they're all their own separate things so you can reuse a lot of assets when you want to 
when you want to recycle your art style in different places. It just makes your life so much easier and it makes changing things and being agile about um, changing elements really fast. So just a recommendation. Um, so I just figured I'd step through um, this particular project. Uh, maybe, uh, oh, one other thing. So these uh, menu panels, they're, that's a great idea for going through each of these panels because I would consider this a panel. I would consider um, the, the if, if privacy policy opened it up, I, I would consider that a panel. The credits is a panel. I don't want to click on it because it has text in it that identifies the particular student uh, who I'm, whom I'm using. But the music on and music off and these types of things, these are not panels. These are buttons. So I agree that having a script helper is good, but you might want to do something like creating a separate object, which is very similar to um, to a menu panel in that it can turn something on and off, but uh, making it its own thing because these buttons are not panels. So it'd be, it's poor communication to developers to use these scripts in places where they might not belong. So for example, I might uh, create a C-sharp script, call it uh, menu, menu button. I'm just, I'm just brainstorming here about a potential route for making something similar to what uh, we're thinking about here. Um, do not recover. Come on. I'm gonna open up menu panel two because I'm basically gonna do some similar stuff. Boom, is open. Boom. So, I'm thinking about this. I don't really want I'm gonna do inheritance. Let's, let's figure out how to do inheritance a little bit. So, um, I'm going to take this button. Do button behavior is gonna be a public method. I don't want it to do anything. It just, it just does its thing, it's a button behavior. Uh, I don't know what it's gonna do because its children will do different things. I've created a script, called it menu button. Um, and I've added a public void do button behavior. However, I want types of buttons to be able to override this particular function uh, and do their own thing. So I believe I want to use public virtual void do button behavior. Virtual means that it's a function that, it's, that other types of buttons can use and change and do their own thing. So boom. I've made my method. Uh, I did remember to stop, right? I did, I'm a good boy. Okay, so menu button. I'm gonna pop over to music button on and off. And I'll use music button. It starts, checking if it starts on or off. Let's, let's find out, probably starts on. Okay, so I'm gonna use the on button. And I'm going to replace this with a new script but it's not gonna be menu button. It's going to be, well, I'll, I'll do menu button for now just to show. So menu button, um, I, I open it up. Well, oop, 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 oop. Prefab, the prefab, oop. I'm in my prefab. I go to my menu button on, I'm removing this and I'm adding menu button. And now if I go to my button, these two should be messed up. Yep, that makes sense. I'm going to drag music button on. I'm gonna have a function and it's gonna say um, menu button do button behavior. Boom. Okay, so now when it's clicked, it'll do some behavior. Doesn't matter what it is um, because it's generic. So now we're gonna make a type of button. I'm gonna make a folder in here. I'm gonna call it um, buttons. Boom. So menu button, well, let's call it menu buttons just because buttons this is more specific. It's a type of menu button. I'm gonna pop in here, create a C-sharp script, and I'm gonna call it menu button toggle underscore menu button. It's going to be a type of menu button that specifically toggles. So let's open it up. Uh, yes. That's just a Macintosh thing. Thank you. Um, I'll give feedback that it's very negative. Okay, boom. 
I just drank coffee, can you tell? Um, so, I'm making this of type menu button. Boom. And all I'm gonna type is the word override and I should see what I want. Mo override, do button behavior. So that means my parent is a menu button. My menu button has a virtual do button behavior. I'll just have debug.log do doing base basic behavior. Boom. And now um, I have a button that is of type toggle and it will do whatever it normally does. Maybe this does some basic action. And then it does a little something more. And what, what should it do? I think it should swap between two different textures because this is a toggle button. So uh, let's do a pop, mm, unity using unity engine.ui because I want to have access to sprites. Um, public image, that is the image component attached to my object. Um, so button image component. <clears throat> and now when I save and I go back to Unity and I click on button options, oh, excuse me, I click on button on. I'm going to remove button this guy because I made a new script called toggle button. And now he wants an image. Where's your image? It's that guy there. Uh, so let me just drag this image into here. You could also drag it from here, from music on. You could, you could do a thousand different ways. I think I could hit that and like find it, but that's a little more awkward. <clears throat> I'm going to make sure that it still knows that I want it to do its toggle behavior. Uh, toggle menu button, do button behavior, do button behavior. Am I blind? Am I being blind right now? Toggle menu button. Do button behavior, there it is. So now that I'm back over here, I have two textures I want to swap between public, ooh, sprites, um, toggle on, and toggle off. I'm gonna have two textures, public bool, current toggle. It's gonna start off as, I don't know, probably, I, I don't want it to be public, actually. I don't want anyone to know except the button to know whether or not it's true or false. And current toggle, that, I, that's why I put the underscore by the way, just like with menu panel, I had that underscore for is open because only the menu panel should really know whether or not it's open or not. Nobody else needs to know. Nobody else needs to know what this toggle value is. It will report to whoever needs to know when something changes, but we are not there yet. Um, it's going to start off as true because it's a, the music starts on it true. Uh, void awake. I could do um, current toggle equals, like get the player settings. So I'll, I'll just add a slash slash. Maybe grab player settings and update current toggle to match. But we don't have any player settings yet. And now I can say button underscore current toggle equals not current toggle. That's basically saying whatever you were be the opposite. If I was true, become false. If I was false, become true. And now I can say button image component dot sprite equals if, uh, so I say there's, a, there's two ways I can do this, the long way or the short way. I'm gonna show you the short way because I'm hyped up on caffeine. Um, current toggle as a question. Is current toggle true? If it is, then use toggle on. If it's not, that's what the colon means. Otherwise, do toggle off. This only works in some very specific um, situations where you're setting something equal to something that you can do a shorthand if statement. The other way to do it, if you wanna do it the other way, would be if toggle then and then else if current toggle um, then button image component dot sprite equals uh, toggle on 
And I'm going to rename this to toggle on sprite for clarity. Toggle off sprite for clarity. Boom. And uh, let's also have down here. Otherwise, if I'm not on, then put an image component at sprite equals toggle off sprite. So, so this line here is just a faster way, not like com computationally faster. It's just like easier uh, to type out than doing all this. Same thing, if you're comfortable with the ladder, do the ladder if that makes it more readable for you. I just like this way because it takes up one line for something easy, like if true, then this, else, do this. It's just, it's just easier. Um, if I had more behaviors going on, like turning off and on, like text and stuff, maybe I'd do something else. But let's also have, yeah, let's do that. Public text toggle text. And I'll have... Um, toggle text dot text equals um, I believe it says uh, mu music colon on so I'm gonna say music colon plus and I'm gonna do another shorthand I want it to be on if it's true and off if it's false so um, current toggle question mark on, otherwise, off. And because I, just like with um, menu panel, there's a chance where like the settings might be off in the beginning. Um, I wanna make sure that all my sprites and stuff are looking good, right? When I start, so I'm gonna extract this into its own method. So public, uh, actually, uh, it's gonna be private. Void, refresh, toggle button view because it's it, it's just a it's just how it looks i'm going to put it in there i cut it and i put it down there let's see if i can get this done before work okay so now we've got that toggle button it's going to say music on or music off okay so now i can hit refresh button here, refresh toggle button view, and I can also do it down here whenever I hit that button. I'm just thinking how I want to do this. Boom. Now, this is its own button that does its own thing, and I don't need to open one button panel and close the other because menus aren't, or buttons aren't panels. So I don't want that behavior. I can get rid of music off. And I want just music on, so I'm going to open up my Illustrator file. I'm going to zoom into one of these. Um, let's take this. Boom. And then I'm going to export this to a texture file. Ooh, when was the last time I used Illustrator? Export for screens, I believe is what I want. And I'm, I just want one of these old buttons. Can I deselect all? Oh, that would be nice. I want this one. Oh, 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 I bet it's this, let me check. Yeah. I just want that. I'm gonna rename it to music, or I'm, uh, button. Button BG, because it's, it's, um, it can be used as many times as I want. So, uh, export access, it doesn't have to just be for music. So here it is, button at eight times, because I exported at eight times resolution. I'm gonna drag it into here, into my art section. Sorry if I'm moving quite fast. I am extreme, I'm in like three cups of coffee in here. It's of type UI, uh, default, boom. And that should make it look nice, apply, boom, there we go. And I want to go to my sprite editor. I want to slice her up. Let's see what we got here. It looks like uh, 256. Yeah, 256 on the right. And 256 on the left. And 
maybe is it gonna be the same oh well that's too much 128 128 128 128 that looks pretty good 128 pixels because the size of my texture so i'm slicing it up so that i have my corners split up in case i want to be able to make my texture any size So mm, I'm looking at that gradient. So the gradient is what makes it difficult. If I knew exactly which pixels that gradient stopped and started at, it would be easier, but I'm just kind of YOLOing it here. Uh, but the, the point will still stand. Let's pop over to my options panel. I'm revealing it just to be able to mess with it. Whoop. I'm going to my music button on. Oh, let me click you. I'm noticing that its positioning is um, a little funky monkeys, and that's fine. We'll, we'll get through that. But I'm going to pop in. I'm going to change. If I, if I had the right font, I would use it. I don't, so I'm going to just use Arial. I'm going to drag button BG onto, onto the image. Boom. I'm going to specify that it is sliced. I'm curious why why it looks like that when I already specified it's a sliced image. I probably just didn't slice it properly. Let's pop over. Let's, let's open up the hood. Right editor. I said let's let's go crazy. If I said uh 256 <laughs> I took boom, boom, and I hit apply. Would that make it look different? Yes, it does. Okay, so let's, let's um, get in there. Wow, I'm so hopped up right now. 140. I've been drinking decaf for like a year. I'm just trying to get us to look in like a good slice here. Maybe 330, 330, 330. Why? That's getting better. Okay, okay. So normally I'm used to working with square images. That, that's one of the problems here. Or 460 by 460, how's that looking? And these should be the same. So I'm gonna say 190 by 190, top and bottom. Hit apply. Ooh, we're, we're so close. Uh, so let's do 500 by 500. Hit apply. Okay, that's 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 good enough. That's good enough. We we can we, I could keep messing with it, or I could export it as a square so that it slices properly. Um, sliced images are typically squares to make life easier. But now, if I wanted, I could make it um, different sizes, and you'll see that it doesn't. If I were to go and make it not sliced, simple. Oh, is that flipped around? Maybe because I already have it set to sliced, you'll notice that it's retaining its... Uh, maybe I'm crazy. I'll leave it like this. It looks good. That looks good. Uh, one. I'm going to go to my text field. I'm going to... Oh, if I squish it like this, will it get weird? Oh. Yeah, I feel like that's sliced. I feel like this is slicing it. Eh, doesn't matter. Sliced. Yeah, should be a square. If if you want to slice, make it a square. I'll make it simple for now. Uh, oh, right. I'm going to go over to my text. I'm going to add some text. Uh, so music colon on. I'm going to say fit to best fit. Boom. I'm going to say bold. Bold, bold, bold. Where's the bold? Boom. 
nice. So we've got that in. I'm gonna turn my music, my options back off, and I think everything should work the same, except I forgot to drag in. Uh, so if I click on music button on, it needs all these components. So I'm gonna say your text component is this. My on sprite is going to be. Oh, I don't. I don't have sprites anymore. So I'm gonna just keep it as the generic sprite. If we wanted, I could have done the music off sprite and the music on sprite. I'll show one and then I'll show the other. So if you just want to use sprite alternators, maybe you have a checkbox and a no checkbox. You would do it like this. I don't have text that I want to swap out anymore, so I'm just gonna make toggle.text always equal to toggle text.text equals if, if I was just using sprites if I was just using sprites you would either delete that text element here or I'm just gonna make it empty both times and I'm gonna swap between my music off and my music on which I noticed that uh, my they're swapped music on music off you can hit play and I should see it swap all right it's playing Perfect. So I'm doing, you see it saying doing basic behavior and it's treating it like a button. It's doing what a button does, not what a panel does. Then if I do it the other way, uh, if I say my toggle, and you might maybe even like just shift colors or something. I click on, oh, I don't need to. I'm gonna pop over here. I'm gonna say music button sprite on, boom. Or excuse me. Um, they're gonna be the same texture for each, but then I'm actually changing my text. I'm gonna pop over here, re-enable my text to say something different. So it'll be technically swapping the texture to itself in the background, the same thing, but it will be now instead modifying the text. This makes you much more flexible. So if you realize you wanted to say something different, you can just change it from a string. You don't have to like actually output assets so see how that um, basically works the same way except it um it makes you able to uh change it on the fly you just have to change it in the code that's that that's why it's it's nice you could even have it say because this is toggle menu button i don't want it to say music specifically so i can say public string toggle on text, toggle off text. String is what this type is with quotes. Now I can say current toggle, do the same thing. Toggle on text, colon, toggle off text. Again, that's saying is current toggle true? Then use the text that I've typed in for current, for toggle on, otherwise use toggle off. Here we go, now they're there. And I removed all my music references, so now it's, it's totally, it doesn't have to be music, it can be any toggle we want. Um, and I'm gonna say, toggle music colon on, music colon off. And it should work exactly the same way. Boom, exactly the same way. And now I could even change it on the fly, like, this is your producer, and I wanted to say music with a capital M. Um, and then you can say, okay, producer, that'll take me five hours, and that'll be um, 40 bucks, and then you just change that one, that one element, but it looks like I can't change those during runtime. So boom, play. Music on, and out to capital M. Easy peasy, that's why it's nice to have it separated on its own. Um, and having the, uh, the, the button as its own background now lets me do the same thing for all of them. So I think I'm still editing the prefab. Uh, I do have to go in a moment for work, but I could say have my privacy policy. Um, I could replace this texture with the button boom. Boom. And I'm saving a lot of space. Now I don't need 10 textures for 10 buttons. I just need one texture. Um, 
It shouldn't be sliced because the image wasn't exported as a square. Uh, and it is going to be, uh, the text is going to say, well, oh gosh, what was it? Privacy. I was having to say privacy because I don't actually remember what it said. Uh, and I'm going to say fit to best fit. Boom. Make it bold. Boom. Obviously, one catch is if you have things of varying lengths of text, then if, if this went long enough, it'd start looking weird. Because, like, one is really big and one is really small. And the other thing you can do so that you don't have to individually place each of these buttons is create a container, create empty button options, put all of these inside the container, boom. Size your container to being exactly where you want it to be. So for example, I believe that I want this to be, if I hit T, I want it to be right under the options, which looks about to be, I don't know, 80% above, mm, 70. Mm, 75. Yeah, that ends right there. That's perfect. So I want it to go from 0 to 75, but it looks like I'm flipped around in my head. So 0 to 0 0.75 on the Y. That's going from here to here. Looks like I want it to be point, point 0.1. Looks good. I could pixel size it as well. Totally up to you. If everything else is pixel sized, then, then do that. Anchors looks like point. 1, 0 0.2, 0 0.15, yep, 2.85. Perfect. I'm going to zero out all of these. Boom. And I'm going to add a horizontal layout group. Oop, I'm stupid. I'm going to add a vertical layout group. Okay, so it looks like I put that button close in there. I'm going to undo until I'm back to where I was, back to where I was. Justin, why'd you do that? Um, zero, zero, and then I think it was like 20, 30, 30. Well, I'll, I'll deal with it later. Button options, vertical layout group. Just pretend I, I didn't mess around with that button too much. Um, we're good, we're good, we're good. Uh, horizontal layout group. Uh, I need to make it point point one five to point eight five zero 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 two point point uh eight zero point eight five seven five. But it was. Zero, 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 a little late for work. Um, cool. And it equally, and it evenly distributes the um, point 0.1. Looks good. It evenly distributes your, your elements across that. And I wanted to use fourth child expand width and height. That makes sense. I want it to be middle center. And that is how you quickly distribute a bunch of elements. So the things we stepped through, how to create textures for your buttons that can be reused across all your buttons instead of having specific buttons be specific textures. Uh, we stepped through how to add text to those buttons and how to, instead of relying on that panel script to swap between button behaviors to, um, to make a button script and then a type of button, which is a toggle that can turn off and on stuff. I hope that was educational for uh, best practices in Unity. Um, let me just make sure that everything still works. And it does. And that privacy is now its own thing. Privacy might open a panel, um, like a little browser thing or something. But okay, thanks guys, have a good one. And uh, let me know if you have any questions or difficulties with doing that.